guys, Mapo Studio is fattening me like a pig right now, fam. With back-to-back -back episodes of greatness like this, this is bound to give me some high blood pressure for real. Mapo is so goaded here yeah, that they decided to reanimate the last few minutes of the episode with an entirely different camera angle just to capture the brutality again. It doesn't stop there. As soon as Ghetto summoned his rainbow dragon to attack Toji and just seeing the way that thing moved, I knew this episode was going to hit different. And guys, I must say, uh, the entire Ghetto vs Toji fight was incredibly well elevated. First, with the environment, it reminded me of a Roman Colosseum. The anime has Toji and Ghetto walking through the houses and that was such a great choice because it had so much tension and suspense because you didn't know exactly when Toji was going to strike and there was a house of mirrors type of feel to it as well. In chapter 73 of the manga, after getting attacked by the curse, all Toji did was just stand there and do a typical villain monologue like he was Syndrome from The Incredibles or something. In fact, this entire fight sequence took place in the same area, but not in this episode. Toji tells Ghetto exactly how he planned all of this, from choosing to attack at a specific time, to storing that cursed spirit inside of his body, to hide its cursed energy. The meticulous planning of this man is ridiculous. And not only that, but with his heavenly restriction heightening his senses to superhuman levels on some Wolverine type shit, he's not only able to perfectly track sorcerers, but he can see cursed as well unlike Marky who needs special glasses to see them that's how wide the gap is between the two but holy shit the way Toji was bobbing and weaving through Ghetto's attacks we have to put some respect on Ghetto's name because he turned into Gilgamesh from the Fate series like not only that but he was using the spirit gun too those were just nice additions i can't lie this fight was so epic they made it look almost like a video game i feel so sorry for ghetto man because he used all of his heavy hitters against toji even when he tried to steal his cursed spirit it didn't work and guys the reason why it didn't work is because it was trained because the curse was trained under different circumstances it wasn't tied to him like how Rika was tied to Yuta. rather this thing was bound to toji like a pet Ghetto needed certain conditions to be able to take the curse, which he was able to do after Toji died. I almost have to refrain from calling this a fight because this was a violation. Toji never saw Ghetto as a threat in the first place, he only saw Gojo as the main one. This man is a true veteran indeed, so much so that after the fight, he remembered why he caught his child Megami. It's either that or he forgot to pay child support that month. It now makes sense why in JJK Zero, when he infiltrated the school, he f up Marky the way he did because <laughs> he started getting some Toji flashbacks like no wonder he hates monkeys after the fight Toji takes the corpse of Rico back to the star religious group headquarters and again the setting was different in the anime compared to the manga in the manga the entire exchange took place outside but this time it's inside an office and I like how the visual representation of the star religious group logo is slightly tilted showing how everything is crumbling on the inside of the organization but guys as soon as Toji walked outside he saw the one the only Sotaru freaking Gojo in the flesh. But this man isn't the same as he was before. He's finally unlocked the true essence of cursed energy and now he's high as f from the reverse curse technique. This man brought himself back from the brink of death like it was Easter Sunday and the voice acting from Yuichi Nakamura was god tier in this scene literally because Gojo has awakened. Even when Toji was attacking him at high speed he was just dodging that and besides the background colours his eyes in this episode looked way more celestial this time around than it usually does. The direction, the storyboarding and the screenwriting and the script of this episode was brilliant especially with the contrast of Toji's character in this episode. With Ghetto he was much more arrogant but when he saw Gojo staring at him there was fear because death was guaranteed. A minor change they did here was that when Gojo hit Toji with red, Toji blocked it just in time with the inverted spear of heaven and I like that attention to detail, he would have been dead otherwise. I also have to shout out the animators for the seemingly realistic movements of Toji swinging his chain, that was so cool. But when it comes to the honoured one moment yeah, 
I can appreciate what the studio was trying to get at, you know, by making Gojo's enlightenment seem beautiful and tranquil. I respect that, but in my opinion, I prefer the manga version. I really don't want to be one of those people, hey, the manga was way better. The panel in where Gojo said that felt much more grander and he said it in a kind of mocking manner because the phrase, throughout heaven and earth, I alone am the honoured one, is rooted in Buddhism in the Lotus Sutra specifically. Just as Buddha said that to proclaim his superiority, so Gojo is doing the same, setting himself apart from every other sorcerer in the anime. But despite that, Mappa did make an absolute showcase of Gojo using Hollow Purple for the first time. It was gorgeous, especially with the reflective water drop. That was so fire. Yeah, so Toji got cooked by that attack, of course. It was very bittersweet and melancholic with him remembering his family. Toji died as he lived and he stood standing as he did so. He's a proper G. Like, what a fantastic character. I'm so glad that at the end of the episode, they adapted the first few pages of chapter 76. It was such an excellent fit because this is the transition point for both Gojo and Ghetto. When Ghetto met up with Gojo at the Star Religious Association, he couldn't even recognize his best friend and the glimmers in his eyes and his apathy towards taking out all those civilians told him all he needed to know. They were no longer the strongest. Gojo is the strongest. He's become a divine being living in their midst. What makes this moment so much more eerie was the clapping and the joy that all those non-sorcerers had for Rico's death. And regardless of all of that, Ghetto still held on to his morals in the moment, even after they failed the mission. And it just creates much more anticipation for us to see how he fell from grace. This was a great episode. This is definitely one of the best episodes in JJK. Last week's episode was slightly better than this one. This one was good, but last week's episode just hit different for me. I'm not gonna lie. Next week will be the final episode of this arc. It's gonna be very emotional, guys. Trust me. You guys are finally gonna get to see Ghetto's fall from grace and how he became the person he became and how him and Gojo split. It's been teased in the movie and it's also been teased at the beginning during the first episode as well so we're finally gonna get to see all of that fleshed out but guys I can't wait to see what the studio does with that one and thank you to all of you who took the time out to watch this video. If you enjoyed it please like, share and subscribe and until next week stay blessed.